Today, I want to talk to you about the greatest news ever. And folks, we've always, we all have gotten good news. We really have. And everyone loves good news. And I am telling you, uh, the greatest news ever uh, was the announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ. Folks, he had to be born if he was going to die for our sins. So we want to talk to you about that today. I have three points if you want to follow along with us in your bulletin. Number one, it was sent by angels. A special messenger made this announcement to Mary. Number two, it was a fulfillment of prophecy. Again, Old Testament is full of prophecy, and it, it has come true in the New Testament. And a lot of the quotes from the New Testament is quotes from the Old Testament. And we will show you that also. It was a fulfillment of prophecy. And number one, it was a miraculous birth. There had never been and never will be again a birth like the birth of Jesus. And I will show you that in Scripture. You know, in our text today, an angel Gabriel brings the greatest news ever to a young virgin girl named Mary. Gabriel's earlier assignment was to announce to Zacharias, a priest, that his wife Elizabeth, who was barren, would be the mother of John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Mary was a young Jewish girl from the tribe of Judah and a descendant of David. Mary was engaged to a, a carpenter named Joseph from Nazareth. Gabriel was about to give Mary and Joseph some seriously shocking news that would change their lives forever. Let's look at this incredible scripture from God's holy word. The greatest news ever, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, and when it says sixth month, it is talking about Elizabeth, her pregnancy. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city uh, of Galilee named Nazareth. And again, it was a Gentile city. John the Baptist and uh, Elizabeth, uh, they were from J Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, the Nazareth was a tiny town, and people, in, especially the religious leaders, wouldn't even go uh, to Nazareth. It, it, they thought it was just insignificant, and, and the Jews that were dwelling with the Gentiles, there was real prejudice uh, and big, bigotry there. But it says here, an angel, and name the angel. And we know there's only two angels. I, we can say the third one, Lucifer, was created, but I don't, really, I don't want to even talk about him right now, okay? Let's focus on the birth of Christ. Uh, Gabriel uh, was a messenger, okay? He made many announcements. He talked to many persons in the Word of God. And then there's Michael, the archangel. And uh, Michael was like head of the angels. And folks, angels are messengers from God. They are messengers from God. Uh, I've never had an angel uh, appear to me. I've never have, had an angel uh, speak to me. But I am telling you, I know when God speaks to me. When uh, Acts chapter 2 church was birthed, the Holy Spirit came down and now angels, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're still there. I still believe in guardian angels. But the Holy Spirit does much of the speaking today. Hold your finger there and go with me to Hebrews chapter uh, 1. Hebrews 1. And the reason I chose this scripture is because angels are mentioned five times in these seven verses. So it gives us an insight at what angels are about. And folks, angels were created, okay? They were created by God and Jesus. And here to start the book of Hebrews, he is saying that Jesus is bigger. Jesus is more supreme. Jesus even controls the angels. God, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by his prophets, which we'll be speaking of in just a few minutes, as in these last days spoken to us by his son, Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, 
and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, set down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, oh, folks, Jesus Christ, he is the supreme being. He is God in human flesh. And there are people that even worship angels. And, and I know people have angel collections. I don't have any problem with that. But I'm telling you, angels, uh, you know, were God's messengers. Angels are God's ministers. But Jesus Christ far surpasses angels. For which of the angels did ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a, a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, that relationship of God the Father and God the Son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Folks, that's part of their duties in heaven. They lead out in worship, and Revelation tells us that. And it says, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So folks, I do believe in angels. And I believe it was an angel, Gabriel, because of the word of God that gave the greatest news ever given. Now look in verse 27. To a virgin, betrothed to a, name, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Folks, the virgin birth is so important. That's what sets us apart. That's what sets Christianity apart. That's what sets uh, us being Baptist apart from all other religions. The virgin birth. And again, you can't look at it from a worldly point of view or a physical point of view. I have even talked to people that said, I was doing okay till you mentioned the virgin birth. Well, folks, everything we believe is wrapped up in the virgin birth. Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus, or he'd have been just like you and I. He would have been a sinner. He would have been born of sin. And I literally believe that God took the Holy Spirit and Jesus and placed them in the womb of Mary. And in that, she carried him for nine months, and he became physically the Son of God, Jesus. And it says, betrothed, and that's, that's a, another term. We use the word engaged, and in the Jewish culture, uh, the betrothal, it was as you were married. It's, it was what we call an engagement period, which was a year normally to that. The husband and wife still lived at the home, but they were considered married. And, and then they would come a year later and seal that marriage. And it says, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said unto her, rejoice, highly favored one. Can you imagine ladies going about your business of a regular day and an angel shows up? and starts talking to you. I mean, it would be shocking. It would be like, man, am I dreaming this? Is this real? Let me tell you something, folks. Angels are real. When God speaks to you, it is real. And, and uh, Gabriel said, rejoice, highly favored one. Of all the ladies in the world at that time, he picked Mary. Why Mary? And folks, you can ask all kinds of questions about why, but my answer there is she was willing. She was surrendered to God. She was faithful to God. God knew her character. God's sovereignty chose her. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. What a privilege it was for Mary to be the mother, the biological mother of Jesus Christ. Verse 29, but when she saw him, 
She was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. First, it was shocked and then troubled, thinking, wait a minute. I know I'm betrothed. I know I'm going to marry Joseph. All right, but man, is this, is this really happening to me? And the same thing was happening to Joseph. Turn to Matthew chapter 1. Look at Matthew 1. Men, think about this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, okay? They had not had, uh, you know, uh, relations. They had not had sexual intercourse, okay? She was found with a child with the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He knew he had not slept with her. He was confused. And the Deuteronomy law said, hey, if if she cheated on him, she could be stoned. Okay? She could be stoned. But he said, no way will I do that. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take uh, to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So an angel talks to Mary, and an angel talks to Joseph so that they could understand this unique birth. So they would understand what is going on in each other's life. And so we see the announcement, the greatest news ever shared was sent by angels. The second thing I want you to see, not only was uh, the greatest news ever sent by angels, but it was the fulfillment of prophecy. Look at verse 30. Look at verse 30. Then the angel said unto her, do not be afraid Mary. Have you noticed that, you know, uh, coalition, those things that are together? The very same thing the angel told Joseph, he told Mary, do not be afraid. Folks, that should tell us something. Even when we don't understand what God's up to, even when it sometimes doesn't make sense to us, they know they had not had a relation together And they were probably scratching their head thinking, how can this be? And there was trouble that she was troubled. And he, you know, a just man wanted to do the right thing, not understanding. Folks, even when we can't see God's hand, we need to trust his heart. God had a plan. This is the only way it would work for Jesus to be born of a virgin. And fear was on them. And the other thing I have to say, everything that I've read, in those days you married young. There are writers that think, that, you know, Mary and Joseph could have been anywhere from 13 to 15 years old. And can you imagine being that young and thinking about the responsibility there? And then the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. The angel said it twice. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. Notice the capital S. Capital S means deity. Not a son. I am a son. Little s. S S-O-N. All right, my father was Lloyd Dwayne Franklin. But it wasn't capital S. There's only one Son of God, and it is Jesus Christ. And ye shall call his name Jesus. What does Jesus mean? Jehovah is salvation. Oh, listen to me, folks. The reason this was the greatest news ever shared, because Jesus will become the Savior of the world. You would not be a Christian today. You would not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior if Jesus, if Mary did not have, uh, uh, if Mary wasn't a virgin and Jesus was not born of Mary. 
verse 32, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And again, later on, we know uh, prophetically in Revelation that, you know, in the millennial time, I am telling you, Jesus will come. Jesus will reign on earth from Jerusalem, and his lineage is, is the throne of David. Verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. See, the deal is kingdoms, worldly, earthly kingdoms come and go. Nobody is a king on earth forever. And when I'm, I'm talking about reigning over countries, but I, it's totally different, folks, with Jesus Christ. He will reign forever and ever and ever. And that ought to thrill your soul. It ought to thrill your soul. Look at Matthew chapter 1. Matthew 1, verse 21. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Almost a mirror, almost word for word uh, what Luke wrote. Now verse 22, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord and through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. I mean, he is literally uh, quoting Isaiah 7, 14. So even prophetically, it was spoken of, the virgin birth was spoken of in the Old Testament. And when we look at the New Testament, it is another one of the hundreds of prophecies that have came true. Then Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah 9, go with me. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, 6, another prophecy. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. I love that song. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he wonderful. Folks, Jesus Christ is Lord over all. He is Lord over all. He's a counselor. There is no better counselor. Hey, I'm all for people going to counseling. I'm all for that. But I'm telling you, the greatest counselor is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. He is the counselor. He is mighty God. He is mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. That's why we don't have peace on earth, folks, is because, you know, they don't know the Prince of Peace. There are so many that are lost. There are so many people. I mean, there, there are literally millions of people who do not celebrate Christmas like we do. Why? Because they don't know the Prince of Peace of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. I'm telling you, folks, this same Jesus is going to come back. I believe with all my heart, the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. And folks, he is coming. He is coming for us in order to establish it with justice, judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we see Jehovah is salvation is what Emmanuel means. God with us. And that news, that news that came to Mary was fan fantastic news. Now let's look at the last thing. 
back in our text. Luke 2. Luke, excuse me, Luke 1. Luke 1. In verse 34. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? Folks, I'm telling you, God can do anything. God can do anything. I hope you realize Jesus was 100% man, 100% God. He was a miracle child. It was a miraculous birth. And it says, And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And that's what happened. God took the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and placed them in the womb of Mary. And folks, I am telling you, that changed everything. It said, verse 36, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this now, the sixth month for her, who was called barren. And again, Elizabeth carrying John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, also was a miracle child. And here's the verse. Right here is everything, folks. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And what the key to this is, folks, and this is the problem people have that do not believe in the virgin birth, they don't understand it, and they don't believe it by faith. See, faith is everything to Christianity. Faith is everything to your salvation. Faith is everything to your everyday life. Faith is everything to being a Christian. And here the Bible explains how it can be. Why? Because nothing, folks, nothing is impossible with God. And you think about that, all the things that he has done. Matthew chapter 1, go back to Matthew 1. Matthew 1, verse 24. Then Joseph, being aroused from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Even in Scripture, it seems that uh, J- uh, Joseph was the biological father of Jesus, but he was not, folks. He was not. Scripture plainly said she was a virgin, and God placed uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in Jesus in Mary. In, in Mary. John 1. John 1. Go with me to John 1. Verse 29. Verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him, toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Folks, I am telling you, that is the message of Christmas. That is the message of salvation. And you could put it in two words. Two words. Jesus saves. We are saved because of the virgin birth. We are saved because Jesus lived a perfect life. We are saved because Jesus died on a cross for our sins. We are saved because we professed Christ and invited Jesus to come into our life. We are saved because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we have to believe all these things by faith. So Christ, folks, is Christmas. When someone says, I hate Christmas, man, I'm telling you, it it hurts my heart because Jesus is everything to us. Matter of fact, that last verse, 
says it all. For God, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Has not God proved this all the way through the Word of God? Did not God speak this world into order? How do you explain that? It's, full, it's called creation, folks. Okay? Did not Moses and the children of Israel cross the Red Sea? It's a miracle. How do you explain that? Folks, you don't have to explain it. You have to just believe it. How did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? It was a miracle. It was a sign of something that was come. And here's what I'm saying. In our day and age, there is nothing that God can't do. I don't care how bad things get. I don't care how uh, impossible situations uh, seem. I am telling you with God, all things are possible. So what we have to do, folks, we have to celebrate Christmas for what it is. It is the day. It is the celebration of Jesus' birth. And no matter what trouble, no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad things seem, I am telling you, all things are possible with God. And folks, you know, I, I, I know people that think we as Christians are just almost delusional in our beliefs. But folks, I believe with all my heart, with all my heart, that Jesus is who he says he is. That Jesus' life was real. Man, there are a lot of people that have trouble with him uh, living a perfect life. They, have, they do. I'm just telling you. But I believe that by faith. So when we get the greatest news ever given, you know what our responsibility is? It's to share that good news. I'm telling you today, and as far as I know, we hadn't signed up for it, but if the public clearinghouse came to my house today and said, winner, winner, chicken dinner, <laughs> and I got some fantastic amount, I'm telling you, the first thing I do is pay my tithe and pay this building off. That way we can keep building for the glory of God. And do you think I would not tell a soul what happened? Woohoo! When you see me in my new truck, you would know something happened. <laughs> and we laugh. But folks, we got something better than a new truck. It's called salvation. So in these two weeks that we have left, would you share Jesus? with someone. He is the reason for the season. He is Christmas. He is the greatest news ever shared. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you make Jesus Lord of your life today? Would you come down and simply say, Brother Mike, I need to be saved today. I don't know this Christ of Christmas. I've never put my faith and trust in Jesus. And I believe that's what I need to do. Father, thank you for the day. God, thank you for sharing the greatest news ever through the angel Gabriel. And God, we've all had great news, great news given. But the greatest news ever given was Jesus Christ's birth. God, the greatest new ever, news ever was his perfect life. God, the greatest news ever that he died on a cross for our sins. And God, I thank you that he arose and that he's coming again. So God, during this Christmas season, may we love Christmas. May we love the manger scene. May we read the Christmas story before we open presents. God, I just pray that we will focus these next two weeks on what Christmas means to us. And God, if you put people in our way, if you put people uh, in our paths, 
God, I pray that we would talk to them about the meaning of Christmas. We could share the greatest news ever shared. God, we love you. This is your invitation. This is your church. We give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? Maybe the Lord is talking to you and you need to, need to rededicate your life or come and join our church or follow him in baptism. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, would you come?